This is the first one we've found on our series, Barn Find Hunter, in seven years. This week, we're in Tennessee, and not only in Tennessee, but we're in Nashville, Music City. Country music stars, studios, concerts. We're hoping there's some old cars as well. We just had a great lunch, and while we're eating lunch, we found out that there's an old garage in town closing down. They're emptying out all the merchandise. Maybe there's cars, maybe there's ports. Okay, and it's an auto repair. Maybe that's him when he was younger. <laughs> Stanley Jones, okay, yes, well, I'm Tom Cotter. Tom, glad to meet you. Tell us about this place. And Lee and I opened the place up as Anderson and Jones. This used to be the place to bring you hot rods, you know, back years ago. Really? Lee passed away back in November, and I've been kind of debating on whether or not I want to try to keep it open. Right. So what, what are your plans for this all this stuff? Uh, the stuff is we're planning on maybe selling what we can. Let's see, here's an old set of Super Sport hubcaps I found. Oh, look at that. 65, 66? Yeah, in the 60s. I'm not yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. but yeah, wow. that's about what they are. What, what's the story of all these cars? It's stuff that got hung up in the floods and stuff. So the water's been this high? Yes, the water has been actually through the shops before. Oh, so this is out for a mail, huh? Yes, that's the old Alfa Romeo up under the truck topper. It's been flooded two or three times. Well, it's a good parts car. Yeah, it would make a good parts car. And I think it's a 78 model, so it's been here a while too. Some collector would love those wheels. They're optional yeah. Alfa Romeo wheels. Uh -huh. And in here, I got a lot of TriStar stuff and uh, back in the back there. Is that like a Pontiac uh, Fender here? I think it's 39, 38 Chevrolet. There may be a raccoon in here, so. So what, what, tell me about the Frazier. How, how did Anderson get to own that car? He went out to a guy's barn or somewhere to work on a vehicle. The car was in the barn, mm -hmm. and he put a jug of gas up on it, fired it up, and started it right up, so. Whoa. And then it's been sitting in here probably, oh, I don't know, 30 years. 30 years, wow. Let me go take a look at that emblem on the front there. Sure. You're, you don't see many of these cars around. No, you don't. That, that's a heck of a logo in here. It's all like, oh. it's like uh, porcelainized. Yeah, it's almost like Cadillac, you know what I mean? Or right. some kind of, it was pretty much an expensive vehicle, I think, when it was new. Now look, look at this, it's like a, a knight in shining armor. Yep. So it's got a flathead, yep. six cylinder, straight six. Looks like it's got a downdraft two barrel. I wonder if this raccoon's gonna surprise me. I have no idea. You're on your own when it comes to that. <laughs> So here's a, a sticker from SO Oil Change. Yes. The oil was changed at 66,899 miles, November 8th, 1964. Okay, I was thinking it only had 30 something thousand miles, must be 60,000, but it's been a long time since I've looked at it. But Maybe that's a three. Yeah, that is a three. So yeah. 30, that's got 36,000 miles and it was, oil was changed, geez, not many miles ago. So it's got a three speed on a column. Isn't that something? It's a really cool Art Deco dashboard. Well, yeah, this, is the, this is the first one we've found on our series, Barn Fun Hunter, in seven years. So. I don't know if I have any more surprises like that or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there might be another car buried in here somewhere. Just as we were leaving the, the last location, Stanley says, you know, take a look at this Corvette I got here. I just dragged it home. So what year is this? 1963. So this is the first year of the C2 Corvette, independent rear suspension, mm -hmm. new body style. Tell me the story of this car. I bought this car probably mid-70s, and I bought it and I gave $1,750 for it and brought it home. I ended up selling it to a brother-in-law of mine after I put a, uh, reworked a 350 truck engine and put in it and a Doug Nash five-speed and put in it. Mm. I bought it back from his widow just here recently. I bought it and the 39 Chevrolet. So how long has this car been sitting, you figure? Pro at least 35 years. So has this been painted? After I sold it to him, he painted it and uh, put hubcaps on it and put a new top on it. So is this a low mileage car, I wonder? I, I don't know what the miles are on it. I haven't really looked, but I would say yes. So it says 12,452. That's probably got 112. 112 okay. Yeah, it would be my guess. This thing is sweet, man. Did you and buy it back for seventeen hundred? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it cost a bit more than that. <laughs> and let's take a look at this thirty-nine you got over here. Yeah, I haven't even tried to clean any of the dust off of it yet. Mm -hmm. 
but I have been looking at some of the heads and stuff, the motor numbers and that. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a the 60s model fuelly engine. It was a fancy old hot rod in the day. You know, it's got the old probably oh. 1970 or so interior kind of thing done. That's older than 70, man. So it's got what is it, three speed or four speed? Four speed. Four speed. So you got aftermarket gauges and you got a metal flake steering wheel. Did your brother-in-law build this? The story on this car, it had a 66, 396, true 396 car. And he found this car and he made a trade with the guy. Hmm. So I was probably 14 years old. And I said, look, I'll buy that car back from you when I turn 18. Well, it's been a few years past ah, 18. Ah, geez, you finally got it. You know, finally in my 30s, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm 67, so. So you went from zero project cars to two. Well, that's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you started to mention those, these two cars because, you know, we would have been on our way somewhere else. So Stanley, thank you, part two. Yeah, enjoyed it. <laughs> sure did. Thank I've you so much. It. This is the bane of my existence. You drive past a place, we're in the, kind of in the industrial side of Nashville, and you find some cars that I'd like to pursue talking to the owner, and there's nobody here. It's locked up. From outside the fence, I can tell you, this is a Crosley chassis. There's that strange aluminum overhead cam engine. This, this is an interesting car, and this is what got my attention. It's a Studebaker station wagon. I think it was called the Wagon Air. And this portion of the roof slid back. For some odd reason, they had a sunroof in the back of the car, not over the driver's head. I once met a guy in Iowa who was driving cross country with his Wagon Air Studebaker, and he was growing herbs in the back. Instead of closing the roof, he opened it so rain could go on his herbs, herb garden in the back of the car. And here's a couple of Pontiacs. I'd like to come back here when they're open because I, I bet they have cool stuff inside there, but this is the problem. Barn fine hunting can't win sometimes. A number of years ago, I was writing a motor motorcycle book and I had some questions about a motorcycle that Jay Leno had. And he said, you know, if you need to get that information, you need to get in contact with Summer Hooker. I said, what's that? He said, no, Summer's a guy. Good to see or, you again. Maybe you could tell best what you do. I mean, it seems to me you find some of the rarest motorcycles on earth. Well, I have for years kind of worked as what you would call a picker. I, mostly in the United States, just talking to people, find out where stuff was. Pretty soon, I just kind of started working for other people as a, a broker, uh, working for dealers and so forth, and uh, consulting with auction companies, consulting with collections, and uh, also have a bad habit, motorcycles, and which has grown into cars. 1964 Alfa Romeo Sprint. So this was a California Black Lake car? It was. May. Speed Queen. Oh, this is, did you put that on there? Yeah. <laughs> That's a brand of washing machine. That was going to go on my 32 Ford, but. Uh huh, okay. So, does this run well? Oh, yeah. Can you start it? Yeah. Wow. Sweet. I didn't know they had downdraft two barrels. Double overhead cam. It's an aluminum head on a cast iron block. Aluminum block with wet liners. That what that is is is, is the actual cylinder. You could probably put you, larger liners in there. And, yeah, you and can bore it out instead so of having to, to bore the crankcase out. Yeah. You just put new liners in. Yep, that's a sweet car. How long have you had this? I've had this about three years. I would own that car. Oh boy, look at that one. This is a 1964 Alfa Romeo Sprint Speciale. Designer, hand drew the whole design. The airflow was so good that when it came up, it made the windshield wipers raise lift. up. Is that right? So it would lift up like that at speed. So they had to put a windshield in for the windshield wipers. The, and do you drive all these cars yeah, regularly? Yeah. Wow. A similar engine to the car we saw yeah, the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a Sprint. This is a Sprint Speciale. And then here's your third one. This is a 1961 Julietta Spider. It's a 1300. 19,000 original miles on it. 
19,000, so it's never been restored probably, has it? It's been repainted. And how long have you had this one? I bought this probably seven years ago. Well, nice cars, man. So I see two-wheel vehicles here and there. Got you know, any stories about those? Well, there's one right behind you. That is a Honda S90, which I've always been partial to. 4,800 miles in, what years again? Uh, 65 or 66, I'm not sure. The S90 was a very interesting bike. It was designed by a guy at Honda who also designed their GP racers. Oh, wow. Really? So it was extremely fast. It'll do 60 miles per hour, mm -hmm. which is pretty good for a 90cc bike. Yep. I guess Hondas have come on to their own where it was, it was the bike that every kid had and they were cheap and yeah. throw them away and people aren't doing that anymore. I mean, it's, it's, it's probably like with classic cars that, you know, a Duesenberg and a Vincent. Okay, there's only so many of those and there's only so many people can afford them. And so people get interested in the next level, the next level, the next level, and eventually they reached Honda. Well, Honda, very innovative company. Uh, they have a good following. I mean, mm -hmm. we'll go in here and have a look, see. Okay. These are the same, these are uh, 90s. They're called CLs, which meant kind of a dual sport designation from Honda. As a dual sport, it had a raised exhaust? Yeah, yeah. So you could be on-road, off-road? You're right, right, okay. theoretically, mm -hmm. you know. 5,957 miles. Well, you buy them with low miles. Hmm. And this one? This is actually a combination of bikes. It's a S90 engine and a CL frame, and this just you know, shows how much you can mix stuff up with Hondas. This is a CT90. Another 90, no kidding. It looks so delicate. It's almost like a scooter. And there are people who've ridden these from Tierra de Fuego to Alaska. Where's the gas tank? It is underneath the seat. So you could have almost a step-through design. Yeah, yeah. And this is original paint? I mean, original paint and everything. plastic? Yeah. No. So and what could somebody expect to pay for one of the, a 90, like one of these? Oh, they're still three figures. Uh -huh. um, you can get them for under $1,000. One of the most significant bikes people say it was ever built was the Honda 750. Yeah. Honda in the 60s started developing multi-cylinder engines for racing. They knew they could spin them up like crazy because they had tiny little light pistons and tiny little valves. There's a guy who raced some Honda, or put a race team together for Honda named Bob Hansen. Yoshiro Honda really liked him, so they had this big meeting one time in Japan. He said, well, what are you going to do? He said, oh, we have a big engine coming. He said, well, I hope you're not doing a parallel twin like the British, because those things are pieces of, you know what. And the Japanese like, but He said, you should make a four-cylinder. He said, you're Charles. We just leaned back in his tight chair and said, we have much experience with four-cylinder. One year later, the Honda Four came out. Disc brakes, electric starter, reliable, did not leak oil. Wow. They released it in the 1969 Las Vegas Motorcycle Fair. And how long did they make a 750? These until the late 70s. So this is a first year model here, 69? Yeah. Is that restored? It's all original. That paint is original? That's original paint. What's the mileage on there? It's got 24,000, 26,000 kilometers. What a beautiful color, man. And anyway, you know, People still say it's probably one of the most significant motorcycles they ever made because it just pivoted the whole world of motorcycling right there. Man, isn't that cool? Nate, neat story. It's been a few years since I've been here. Yeah. It was filled with entirely different kinds of vehicles last time I was here. Hot rods and things. So, Summer, thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah, well, good to see you again. See you down the road. Join us as we drive in and around the city of Nashville trying to find some old, rusty, dusty cars. Happy hunting.